When did God begin? Then I want to talk about the Almighty. Lift up your hand and say the Almighty. Say it again. 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 I am a product of that heart sacrifice. I am a product of that heart sacrifice. You are a product of that heart sacrifice. Do we have accommodation for the message this afternoon? Are you willing to hear for 10 minutes? 20 minutes? Five minutes? One hour? Amen. I want to seek your consent. Do you want me to preach? Or do we leave it till we come in the evening? If you want me to preach, then you have to stay till the end of the message. Amen. Amen. I bless God for another privilege, an opportunity of stepping into this place. I'm excited about the team for this week. What is the team again? What? The revolution of the Almighty. Amen. Join me to sing this song. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. All I know. All I know. He's a great Hallelujah. We glorify God that he has allowed us to be alive to this moment. And I bless God and I also appreciate the Lord from what mommy said. I thank God that he helped me to finally defend my PhD dissertation at the University of Port Harcourt. And um, I vowed that I will not accept honorary doctorate degree. I was too young to do that. Not even the one that the Lord gave me. We're having a conference at Mina. And somebody prophesied, frowning his face. You know, sometimes those who want to prophesy, frown their face. As if if you don't frown your face, we won't believe that the Lord spoke. He said, Thus says the Lord. From today, you will no longer answer Reverend Chido Craft. It will be Reverend Dr. Chido Craft. I said, what business has God in giving me honorary doctorate degree? I rejected the prophecy because I'm sure the Lord has no business doing that. Otherwise, but I thank God that he has helped me that finally, before the goggled first professors, I was able to finally defend my PhD dissertation at the University of Port Harcourt. To God be the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm reading from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. My duty this afternoon will be to, of course, I don't qualify to introduce God. 
And this program talks about the revolution of the Almighty. No mortal man is qualified to introduce God. But this afternoon, I want to scratch an introduction into God. And I want to believe at the end of the day, I shall give way. He that has been introduced will come and do a great performance. Amen and amen and amen. The Bible does not seek to prove the existence of God. No. There was no attempt by, the, by God himself to prove that he exists. Of course, any God capable of being proven is not qualified to be God. This afternoon, I want to talk about the Almighty. Lift up your hand and say the Almighty. Say it again. 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 The greatest problem of our generation is that we don't know God. Tell your neighbor you don't know God. The more you know Him, the more you know you don't know him. The closer you draw to him, the father he becomes. He said in the beginning, God created. Number one question this afternoon is, when did God begin? Let me who are the graduates and the lecturers? Is it this ones or the other ones? <laughs> lecturers. Let me begin from the lecturers. When did God begin? It was not disclosed in the Bible. It was not disclosed. But he began somewhere. Okay. When did God begin? God has no beginning. When did God begin? He has no beginning. Uh, let, let maybe you know sometimes a, a, a student can understand more than the teachers when did God begin God is the beginning and the end you are preaching a sermon God has no beginning when did God begin yeah. God has no beginning somebody say he began in the beginning. When you say he began in the beginning, you are wrong. He began before the beginning began. Do you agree with that? Now, how many of you believe that he began before the beginning began? Raise your hands. Now, listen to me this afternoon. If you say he began before the beginning began, you are equally wrong. You have accepted the fact that he began. The Almighty has no beginning. He says, in the beginning, God created. Not that God began. He existed. And then created from point of Genesis 1-1. One, one. I pray that somebody will understand he that we want to talk about this week. He says, in the beginning, God created the heavens. And let me say this. God came out one day without the raw material. And he said, let there be light and there was light uncreated creator unchangeable changer immovable mover uncaused cause shake your neighbor again tell him you don't know God say it again say it again say it again our prayer is that this week there shall be a revolution of the almighty and when you know him 
your lifestyle will change. When you know him, you won't cry the way you cry. When you know him, you will have a greater confidence. When you know him, I was reading about Jacob and Labor. I made this comment. I, I tried to explain this in one of my tapes. Titled, Rachel, what are you sitting on? It came to pass. The Laban told them, Why did you steal my God? And I said, This kind of God capable of being stolen. It's not the Almighty we are talking about. How can you pack out of your yard and you pack your God inside your portfolio? A God that is supposed to secure the worshippers is here by having security problems. I won't worship the God that has security problems. The God you need to guard and protect. When I think of this God, let me show you something. There was something that struck my heart. Um, that's Exodus, I think 818. Something interesting. 818 of Exodus. 818. But when the magician tried to produce nuts by their secret arts, they could not. Let somebody shout, they could not. I mean, shout, they could not. Say it again, say it again. I know after this week, it shall be said that people try to eliminate you, but the answer will be this. They could not. It shall be said that witches and wizards visited you while you were sleeping, but it shall be said they could not. They try to eliminate you, but it shall be said what? They could not. You know, but, 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 but look at it. It said they could not. And the nurse were on men and animals. 19. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, This is. This is what? Now, did you get it at all? He said, This is what? Now, one finger. Now, listen to me. Just what? One word. Okay, when we finish welcoming the guests, then we can listen. Bishop Ayajuru is here, Paul. God bless you. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, can you listen to me now? All right. It shall be said that when they wanted to do something, they could not. But it was not even believers. Magicians themselves confessed. They went back to Pharaoh and reported, oh God, what we saw was greater than what we could imagine. No power earth could do this. This is the finger of God. Now, that is just one finger. Then he said he had the whole world in his hands. When you think of the whole world, you are not talking about our planet, earth. Think of our galaxy. Think about solar system. Think about the entire universe. Think about the Alpha Centauri. Think about the closest place. The whole thing. They are just like a drop of water in his hands. If the finger could do this, then when they say the hand of God is upon you, what a mighty thing. And I want to say this week, the hand of God shall be upon somebody. It shall be upon somebody this afternoon. It shall be said concerning you, the hand of God is upon you. If a finger can cause a magician to change their language, what are the man who has upon his life the hand of God resident upon him? I'm still talking about the Almighty. I don't qualify to talk about him. He, the other day he said, I am that I am. And he said, besides me, there is no other God. If any being tried, if any being claims to be God, let it come and challenge me. But let me also say this. 
He's also a judge. He's a judge. And of course, a no-nonsense judge. Church, listen. It's not the senior pastor that decides who goes to heaven. She would have given you direct visa to heaven because of the way you do your seed faith. Because of your faithfulness and tithing, it would have given you direct visa to heaven. It's not even the committee who decides who goes to heaven. They would have sat down to look at your financial muscle and say, this brother has done so many things in this church. Whether he's qualified or not, let's push him there. He's a no-nonsense judge. And that's why we should fear him. That I am a reverend does not mean that I cannot go to hell. Of course, I have said the hell cannot be complete if there's no general overseer in hell. Hell cannot be complete if there's no evangelist in hell. Somebody must represent the chorus stars in hell. Somebody must represent the choir in hell. The workers must be represented. But the issue is this. Are you the man or the woman? You know, this is a generation of intelligent sinners. People who commit sin very neat. But look at what I'm saying this afternoon. He is a no-nonsense judge. And as I go through the scriptures, and I begin to see this almighty, he is everywhere at the same time. He's not limited by space. While he's answering our prayers here, as South Africa is answering their prayers. He's working at London. He's working at Singapore. He's working at United States of America. Everywhere. The psalmist says, Where shall I flee from your presence? If you are flying 39, 40,000 feet above the sea level, above Boeing 747, he is there. You are in the high, on the high sea. He is there. Where can I run? In the darkest the dark is the invisible eye. He sees you. My worry is this. Secret sinners hide their sins from men. And unfortunately the men that they hide their sins from, they are not the judge. Go and ask every intelligent sinner. All he does is to neatly commit the sin so that human beings will not discover. But he doesn't seem to realize that man is not the final judge. Do you know the best secret sinner? The best secret sinner is the sinner that can hide his sins from God. Because God doesn't see you, he wouldn't count it against you. But if God sees you, man, you are inescapable. He's everywhere. He sees. He knows you. He knows your address. He knows your secrets. Now listen again. The Sam Almighty, he has all powers. The power to heal, the power to deliver, the power to save, the power to break every yoke. He has all powers. And have you heard it in Psalm? He said it has been said that power belongs to who? The power belongs to who? If power belongs to him, which one is the devil operating with? Satan is existing on a borrowed power. The original power belongs to God. Therefore, the devil has limitations. He is all the Almighty, he's all powerful. The same Almighty, he has all power, he sees everything, he's everywhere. And of course, as we talk about the Almighty, I want to repeat that there are three things he has never seen. The Almighty. He has never seen a sinner that he cannot forgive. He has never seen a situation he cannot change. He 
has never seen a sickness that he cannot heal. Let me repeat. He has never seen a sinner that he cannot forgive. So if you are here this afternoon, you are a candidate of mercy. Because the almighty God will release his mercy upon people this week. Then he has never seen a situation that he cannot change. Your situation cannot be, be bigger than God. Your situation will bow when he appears and is willing to appear this week when he is revealed he will reveal himself unto you a apart from that he has never seen a sickness that he cannot heal and let me say this the bible is full of names for god some of these names are revolutions encounters of people i have a prayer for you this week you shall have a personal encounter of the almighty the encounter that will cause them you to give him a name you shall give him a name by your experience and after this week he shall not be called the god of abraham alone the god of isaac and jacob he shall be called the god of who the god of who the god of who you know as we go through the scriptures when Abraham had an experience with him, he made a sacrifice. At the zero hour, he provided a lamb. They called him Jehovah Jireh, the great provider. The Almighty is the great provider. And I want to talk to somebody and say, I call him the God of the zero hour. He begins when you come to the end of yourself. He is the final bus stop. When, when men have given up on you, then he picks you like a football. When men say you no longer be useful, he makes, oh my God, he makes a sense out of every nonsense. He makes a sense out of every nonsense. And let me tell you, this week, there are people who will panel beats. There are people who will sand paper. There are people who will break and remake. There are people who will lift up again. He will take you from where you are to where you should be. The Almighty. The Almighty, the Almighty, the, he's called Jehovah Nisi. He will fight for you. Let me warn you. If you continue to fight for yourself, they will wound you. Any moment you want to fight for yourself, they will wound you. We have stories. Robbers came and you pulled your gun. Some have died because of that. If you fight for yourself, but when God, the Almighty, fights for you, you'll be a spectator to your own battles. Jehovah is He's the giver of peace. I can't forget this ancient song. If you please, I can sing it in Igbo. After this, an Igbo land. Ezi udo udo kedi ebube kwe ka Jesus bata no bigi etorudo ezi udo udo kedi ebube kwe ka Jesus bata no bigi ujogi ka gebu abali ya gehi ujogi ka. Jesus, but Guamo Butogi, Mbena Magi Jesus, Guamo Butogi, Okuiko, Guamo Butogi, Guamo Butogi, Mbena Magi Jesus, one name Guamo, Guamo, Guamo Butogi, one name cannot be bought in the market it can't be bought in the supermarket the almighty giveth peace and the only way he gives peace is by accepting jesus as your lord and personal servant you may be a man of great financial muscle without peace you can be a great man even in this church without peace the issue is not your position that you occupy 
But the issue is, do you have the peace of God in your heart? People are confused. And let me repeat, the church is not a social club. The church is a fellowship of pilgrims. Men with a common destination. And our common destination is heaven. Now listen to me. I won't be surprised if there's somebody here without the full intention to go to heaven. Somebody may be here to socialize. Somebody must be here, may be here to belong to a club. Because when you believe you're going to heaven, it will affect your lifestyle. It will affect what you do in the secret. It will affect what you do in the public. Because you're a heavenly candidate. Listen to me. It's not all about church. The present problem of our generation is churchianity without Christianity. People have gone to the church. They get into champagne Christianity without actually digging deep into what the Lord Almighty is. When you know the Almighty, you win and you will not. And you will not mess with what God has asked you not to do. What am I saying this day? He giveth peace. And he gives peace to people who are serious with him. This is all my, they call him Jehovah Rofeka. Others call him Jehovah Rapha. He said, he who forgives all your iniquities and healings all your diseases. And he says, by his stripes, we are healed. Let me say this. He will reveal himself unto you this week as a great healer. I said you have never seen a signal that he cannot heal. And may I inform you that if you are sick, every disease in your body is an illegal occupant. Over 2,000 years ago, the price for your healing was paid. And if the price for your healing was paid, then why would the disease or sickness remain on your skin? If you know the Almighty, it is time to pick up authority and then command the disease to quit because the disease has illegally occupied your body all these years. He's the Almighty is Jehovah Rufeka. The same Almighty is Jehovah Ra. My mind goes to Psalm 23. He gives us the revelation of the character of the Almighty. He said, the Lord is my what? I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. God is going to transfer you to greener pasture. He restored my soul. I will read every of the verses. I will pick up certain things relevant to what I want to say. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. On this altar this week, there shall be tremendous restoration. <laughs> God, I want a revolution of yours as a restorer. Take me back to where I first met you. There are men in the church that have had spiritual somersaults. There are people who have had spiritual accidents. But I hear God say, it is time. The Almighty shall reveal himself. He said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For, let me put something there. For the Almighty is with me. Even though I walk through, walking through is permitted. Not walking at all is strange. Did you get my point? Just a language that I've been hearing and I still want to. You know in Genesis, God said by the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. The Pentecostal people talk about sweatless prosperity. <laughs> and um, I think they are entitled to own an opinion. I'm still looking for prosperity that has no sweat. Even if you want to be a robber, go and ask them what it means. It's not easy to penetrate somebody's security. Talk about academics. You don't even talk about that. But 
He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are licensed and permitted to walk through the valley. But it's not necessary for you to build your permanent flat in the valley. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you can see a shadow, but that does not mean you are dying. Shadow of death does not mean you are being consumed. You are permitted to see the shadow so that your testimony shall increase. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, whatever you are passing through, tell your neighbor, I'm just walking through. <laughs> say it again, say it again. Say it again, say it again. Say it again, say it again. I'm just walking through. We are not meant to be there forever. And as the Almighty is revealed unto you this week, some people will graduate from valley experiences. And God will cause you to walk and have a testimony. For you shall have seen a revolution of the finger of God. What I'm preaching this afternoon is an introductory message into what the Lord will be doing the entire week. He says, also, though I walk through the I fear no evil, for thou art with me. The important thing is not what you're going through. The important thing is who is with you. If the Almighty is with you, then the boldness will come upon your heart. I fear no what? If. And he said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. When we know the power of God and understand God, you will know that when God decides to lift you up, ordinary tree in your father's compound has no power to stop God. You know, sometimes we have overemphasized this issue of deliverance, overemphasized the issue of land deliverance, or uh, whatever deliverance, that we seem to touch the power of the Almighty. If you know God, if God picks you up, somebody wrote a book and it talks about John chapter 8 where he said free indeed I said if you are born again and you have not passed through deliverance that you are free but not indeed we are having a generation where somebody can dream pick up his pen, write anything but maturity will cause you to go through the writings and know whether they are biblical if everybody will pass through deliverance, then there is a query. You query the efficacy of the blood of Jesus Christ and what happened at Calvary. I do know somebody can consciously get himself roped into something and you need some form of deliverance for you to be freed from it. But let me say this, that the Almighty has the capability. Uh, let me say this. We delve into a lot of things in our present generation. He said, Thou preparest a table before me in the what? In their presence. You know, I don't know where Pentecostal got the prayer. You thunder people, kill people, bury them. You catapult them. I think the next prayer now is to send the tsunami and send uh, Katrina. You come to your name and say, Katrina, tsunami. If you investigate, some people have started the prayer. I'm sure that pattern of prayer didn't come from Jesus Christ. I hear people pick up the microphone. We have a generation of wicked prayer warriors. Wicked intercessors. It doesn't matter who is doing it. It doesn't matter how popular it is. Something that is popular may not be right, and what is right may not be popular. Listen to me. Get back to 1970. Get back to 1980. Was the devil attacking Christians? We are their battles against believers. I'm asking you. If they are aware, then did God himself answer prayers of believers in those days? The sheep sometimes will get scattered. Somebody in the church came and said, 
Tomorrow night, sweep your compound and come in the program. Bring the sand. I'm going to pray for you. And he came that night. Babies in the Lord went and swept. Brought the sand. And when he brought the sand, you know what he said? I pray for you. Look what, what will happen to your enemies after three days. Let the sister give me powder. Just open your bag and give me powder. It's allowed for sisters to have powders in their bag. I'll be surprised if I got it from a brother's bag. <laughs> you know, there are funny, funny things that have started creeping into the church. And we follow it sheepishly because we don't have a revelation of the Almighty. I was told that a preacher came to a church and asked the church to come with powder the following day. And people went and brought powder. And when it was time for prayer, everybody had his own powder. Pastor, Aya, put powder, powder. Give Aya Jorosu. Give Aya Jorosu. But listen, funny things are happening on the pulpit, Pentecostal pulpits. Native doctors have taken over some of our pulpits. Native doctors. When it was time for prayer, you know what he said? Oh yeah, in the name of Jesus, blow air. Eat the powder. They will pursue your enemy. Oh yeah, blow. <laughs> what is the difference between this practice and what they do in the native doctor's home? Occultism in Pentecostal circle. It produces what we call syncretism in theology. What am I saying? May God give us a revolution this week. <laughs> if you know God, no native doctor will climb the pulpit and deceive you. <laughs> Ministries are springing up. Some are in flats. Some are in homes. Some are in places. They will be talking about good venture in the church. But you will not produce money. But that man in a flat that will tell you, no, 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 no. He will project God as a money doubler. Because you want to be a candidate. You go there. What am I saying? Thou preparest a table before me. How can I pick microphone? Where am my mama? Where am my papa? Die. Die, die. Mama, papa, die. Listen, it's no longer funny. Assuming I am your father, an unbeliever. Even if I am wicked and a witch. And I was in a corner listening to you. Where you were praying. Where are my mama? Where are my papa? Die. Die, die. Holy Ghost fire. People doing physical exercise. Some things you say God answered your prayer. They are mere coincidence. Mere coincidence. Quack your neighbor again. Tell him you don't know God. <sighs> say it again. Say it again to that person. Huh? That's why you have become a chameleon believer. Chameleon. This person will come. You yield. This person will come. Men without foundation. People without foundation. Do you know the greatest problem of our century? Some became men of God without becoming children of God. When a man has no salvation experience, when a man has not been born again, all of a sudden you hear that he's a man of God. Asarok talks about due process. This one is undue process. But somebody didn't become a child of God, didn't pass through Jesus University, and all of a sudden he became a man of God. What will he teach? He said, Thou preparest a table before me. Look at the Almighty that I know. I don't know the one that you know. The Almighty that I know. If somebody tells you the Okoraf, you won't be this. It's under my dead body. He has given me prayer topic as per the fire, fire prayer. If I now begin to pray that he will die, if he dies before I become something, it means his prophecy has been fulfilled. I will suggest that the better thing to do is this. You said it's over your dead body. I will turn it the other way. 
it will no longer be over your dead body it shall be in your presence how about that the man who said you will never marry you will never get the fruit of the womb was there that day when your traditional marriage was performed that he even attended your wedding and attended the dedication of your baby that the man who said you never be promoted was forced to write your promotion letter somebody shout in their presence uh, say it again say it again say it again say it again when you have a revelation of the almighty listen to me this day what the lord will do in your life the lifting that will come from the almighty it shall not be done in a corner it shall not be done in a secret it shall be in their presence let somebody say in their presence uh -huh. say it again 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 it shall be done in their presence your lifting shall be done in your presence they will know that the son and not we have an almighty he's a great god he's a great god he's a great god no powers can stop him no authority can stop him no demon can stop him no witch can stop him no wizard can stop him i will be god. what god says i'm going to be god has the capability of breaking every barrier he can stop your stoppers he can stop every hindrance no matter what they have done today i see people having the gift of digging our poison when i was growing up i saw two persons that dug our poison number one was native doctors number two cherubim and seraphim maybe pastor i don't know if you have biblical support about the gift of digging our poison Maybe you have I had, maybe our our God imagine you have some biblical support because people now have the gift they you 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 get your ticket hire buses to your compound listen we are not living in a different world the economic crunch can affect anybody are you understanding what I'm saying it can even affect church offering even in america when there was tsunami it affected the offering the income of the church somebody was saying that what am i saying this idea of telling you what well, there's a message that i don't know if i'm going to preach it let me let me let me keep quiet but do you know that there can be delayed marriage it's not necessarily traceable to family costs there can be delay for you to get the fruit of the womb you can't necessarily trace it to Oha, what is Oha in English? Oha tree. I don't. <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm saying? You know there are this tree called Oha. You know Oha. What do you call it in English? Huh? <laughs> he said Oha is what? Oha. Okay, I'm glad you know what Oha is. Maybe there's no Oha in the English land, so they don't have equivalent of Oha. How can you believe in the Almighty? We're talking about revelation of the Almighty. And somebody will be telling you, that tree, that tree there, this tree, is, it has the destiny of all the people in your family. Bringing in terror, terrorism into your heart. Oh my God. When I have a revelation of the Almighty, I shall become Anwana Bebe Yana Tangish. God is looking for a fortified generation. The Bible said, They that know their God. But the people who know their God, you know the doctrine of family deliverance, but you don't know God. You know the doctrine of land deliverance, but you don't know God. You know the doctrine of family cause, but you don't know God. They that know their God. Shikabaramanda Huria Labakaya. They that know the Almighty God. He's a great God. He's a great God. 
He's a great God. All. They shall be might and they shall do exploits. When we know him, we can't help by singing holy, holy, holy. Lord. My God. Thank you, Jesus. God. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Give him the worship. prepares a table before you in their presence no matter what they have done no matter what they dog the God in you <laughs> I say do you have God in you do you know you are a container of the Trinity he says I and my father will come and make our abode in you and already the Bible said you are the temple of the Holy Ghost and he who touches you touches the apple of God's eye. Ah. I think we need to get back and know the rudiments of what we are in Christ. So that somebody will not exploit you. The anointing on the word of God is greater than the anointing on any single man of God. This book is a big treasure. Pick it up. God can give you revelations. And may I tell you, from revelation Genesis to Revelation, they are all revelation of the Almighty. I'm glad to inform you, God has written a book in which you can know about him. The book is this book of books, very authentic, written by 40 scholar, uh, uh, authors, within a space of 1,000 plus something years. Yet the one who wrote 1,000 years ago did not contradict the person who wrote today. Oh, 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 what a book. What a revelation. What a love letter that the Lord has written unto us. Listen to me. Accept it. Believe it. Chew it. Assimilate it. Absorb it. It will get into your spiritual system. It will make you the man God wants you to be. And go where God wants you to go. I like God's table. If he prepares a table for you, he gives you balanced diet. He gives you balanced diet. He told Elijah, go and hide by the brook. And ravens brought unto Elijah bread and meat in the morning, bread and meat in the evening. Why was it not bread and bread? Why was it not meat and meat? The answer is this. God is interested in balanced diet. If God decides to bless you, it will not be half-baked blessing. And no matter who doesn't like it, it doesn't matter who doesn't like it. You are a vessel in the hands of the Almighty God. Before we draw the curtain this afternoon and come back again in the night for another revelation of the Almighty God, I want to let you know that this God had decided to reveal himself in somebody. I read again John 1.1. 1, 1. Check your Bible. Is there anybody here with a Bible called New World Translation? Look at it very well. So that you can help me read it out. Check very well. New World Translation. Raise your hand if you have that Bible. New World Translation. Look at it very well. Anyone here? New World Translation. Look at it very well. Anybody? 
Nobody. Okay. John 1 1 says, In the beginning, what? Was the word. And the word. And the word. And if you go down, he said, And the word became flesh. The word lived among us. And the Bible said, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good, delivering people who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The Almighty in his power decided to come into the womb of a woman by miracle. What is miracle? Miracle is a temporary suspension of the law of nature that the finger of Yahweh will prevail. The law of biology is that you know, a lot of reproduction. Male and female gametes will meet for fertilization to take place. Lord of miracle came, suspended this law. Fertilization took place without the coming together of a male and female gametes. And then a child was born. A child was born. Unto us a son was given. And he came, lived among us. He was fully anointed. He went about doing good, delivering people who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And they got him, they killed him. And he died. He didn't faint. He died. Buddha also died. Up to today, Buddha is still in the grave. Shinto came, founded Shintoism. He died. Up to today, he's still in the grave. Zoroaster came, founded Zoroastrianism. He died. Up to today, he's still in the grave. Muhammad came, founded Islamism. He died. Up to this afternoon, Muhammad is still in the grave. Talk about religious leader. They came. They are gone. They are no more. Ha Talk about them. Name them. But this revolution of God, he came. He died. After three days, this is the core kerygma of our faith. The heart of Christianity. It is a reason for our boldness. A reason for our authority. A reason for our authenticity. That he died. After three days, he came out triumphantly. And he declared, All powers. All powers. In other words, powers of the almighty has been given to me and because he lives to be confessed tomorrow because he lives my fears are gone because I know Shantori Allah Mama Who is holding your future? The chief in your village. Baba Sanjo. Is it all Jews or Kam? Who is holding your future? Is it the three in your father's compound? Is it the community leaders? Who is holding your future? Oh my God! Because I know He holds my future. Jesus holds my future. The Almighty holds my tomorrow. My tomorrow is not a Nigerian government. Your tomorrow is not in CPM. They don't hold your tomorrow. No denomination was my tomorrow. No more tomorrow was my tomorrow. Risagraba Cantoria Lama. I know he who holds my tomorrow. And because he holds my tomorrow, secret meetings can never stop it. Because he holds my tomorrow. People who don't like my face cannot interfere. Ah, the Almighty, 
the Almighty. The Almighty. May I ask you a question before we draw the cut? Do you know him? Once again, do you know him? Are you, you have been hearing about him, but do you know him? You've been reading about the Almighty, but have you experienced him? In case you're not born again, you are a thought in this church. Aburu. Aburu. Thought. Last year I was having a program, a revival program, in one church, a joint revival at Lagos. I don't know what moved me. I asked the vocalist, the sister who was a what well, sister, who was a vocalist. Are you born again? Thank God for her transparency. It was in a front line Pentecostal church. Here was a singer who so sang until we were catapulted into the third heavens. But she was not born again. She was not born again. I publicly told her, it means you are a doubt or your passenger Christian. You know, when you want to travel, they'll tell you one chance. What? I don't know. They kill a lot. They kill grammar so much. One chance is, one chance is, one chance is. Two chance, two chance, two chance. <laughs> one people, one people. You don't know, you understand what I'm talking about. And so, but you may be deceived. By the time they say, yes, 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 yes. Are you going? Are you going? You enter the vehicle. You will see men and women, men in the vehicle. You will think they are traveling with you. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, sir. A reliable information is that women have also joined. Now, you, because so that it will be combined, you know, you will be so that you will have full deception. <laughs> and then you think these are fellow passengers. You join them, and at the end of the day, you will discover that these are men and women who are simply there to attract passengers, but they are not going to the same destination with you, Papa. Why must I preach people to heaven and not be a candidate of heaven? Why must I committee spiritual affairs, become a committee member of a frontline Pentecostal church, but living on number seven Hell Street? Let's you know this is a week of revolution. Christianity has come to a radical junction. Operation Declare Your Stand. Christianity is not all about I feel groovy, I feel high, I feel this, I feel this, I feel dan dan, I feel Hollywood. It's more than that. I asked that lady, Are you born again? She said, No. When I said you are now a doubt, are you willing to be born again? She burst into tears. She got born again that night. And at the same night, the Holy Ghost came upon her. She received the Holy Ghost and started speaking in tongues. Who have you come to look for in the church? Some came for breakthrough. I want to announce to you this day. If you have come to God for what he can give, soon you will go with a barrel full of disappointment. People that will be sustained are men and women who will come to him for who he is and not for what he can give them. Who he is. He's a great God. He deserves our worship. You want quick marriage? Quick money? Is that why you came? Is that your reason? You can also get such in the house of native doctors. Are you a worshiper? I pray this afternoon, if you are not born again, the A, B, C, D of the revelation of the Almighty is for you to be born again. Receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Confess your sins to him. I don't care how long you have been in CPM. You know, the sun can harden a substance, can also melt a substance. The most dangerous sinner is not the criminal on the, on, on the highway. It's not the prostitute in the brothel. One stroke of message can get them cry and get born again. But you see the criminal on the altar. The criminal in the front seat. The criminal in the choir. Some who are at the front seat of Pentecostal churches, but are the back seat of the Holy Ghost. Those that the Lord has condemned. Their hearts are so hardened. But they are still here. It doesn't matter. Your offering is nonsensical nonsense before the Almighty God. If you are a sinner, the first offering God demands for you is come to the altar. Give your heart. Listen.
Any moment from now, the curtain of your life shall be drawn. And if you die in this condition, without the revelation of the Almighty, without being born again, Ojikale might bury you. CPM in the whole Nigeria might bury you. But you'll be a child of hell. Listen to me. We must be serious this week with the Almighty God. It's not all about jamboree. It's about seriousness with the Almighty. Come to Him now that there is time. Because tomorrow, it might be forever too late. If you know Him, then other revelations will come forth. Bow your heads in prayer. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. All I know. All I know is and you want to give your life. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. You're blessed. You are blessed. Wherever you are, whether outside or inside, stand to your feet. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm willing. Stand up as you raise your hand. I want to pray for you. It's not a matter of being ashamed. Today may be your last time. It was a revolution. Come out to the altar. Come, let's pray together. It's a great God. All I know. All I know. It's a great God. It's a great Come to me. Come for this great opportunity of giving your life to Jesus. to come out to be prayed for money or blessing i just said those who want to be born again you want to repent of your sins and receive jesus as your lord and personal savior i'm not asking for people who are coming for breakthrough or open doors you know your life is rough your life is rotten before the almighty and that god almighty is a no nonsense judge that he can put you to her and today you want to give your life fully to Jesus.
Halleluja. Herr Lieber, lass uns heute Rost werden. Mit der Hand. Er hat mir schon wieder gut gefahren. Er hat mir schon wieder mal ein Ziel. Er hat mir schon wieder mal ein Ziel. Er hat mir schon wieder mal ein Ziel. Pastor, the enemy will not succeed to corrupt his sinister past. Lord, his sinister past in my life. The doorway to the revelation of Almighty. Father, thy word has said.
And I have no choice but to magnify God unashamed. Let the rocks be kept silent for one more day. Let the whole world sing out. Let the people say, Almighty, most holy God, faithful through the ages, Almighty, most holy Lord, glorious Almighty God. Well, time marches on with the innocence gone and the darkness has covered the earth.